boost mode. Here we go. It is so fast. I feel my stomach. My stomach's not doing too well right now. Here we go. All right, let's see. Hey guys, welcome to the BMW Block YouTube channel and once again, welcome to Lisbon. Uh, you might have seen my coverage by now on the i7 M70, in case you haven't, go check it out. And maybe also the i5 eDrive 40. I just literally finished filming that car. Hopefully the review goes live before this one. That's the plan because the way that I ended that video was something like this. I'm gonna go swap the cars from the i5 40 to the i5 M60 and see how they compare on a similar road. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do immediately in this video. I usually like to start with maybe an overview of the car, the interior design, exterior, tech specs, and all of that, but we're gonna leave that towards the end. We're gonna go for some highway driving. We're gonna be talking about highway assistant. We're gonna be talking about suspension, steering, and so on and so forth. But immediately, I just want to go on this curvy road here because that's going to give me an apples to apples comparison in between this one and the E40. But before we do that, let's talk specs. And I'm going to read them quickly because I don't want to waste too much time, you know, and I want to make sure that I get them right. So 590 horsepower or 601 PS depends by which metric measurement you're going by. There is a boost mode for 10 seconds, which kind of give you an additional 83 horsepower. So essentially you will have more power and a lot more torque with that boost mode for 10 seconds. 605 pounds feet of torque, it says in my notes. Zero to 60, 3.7 seconds, top speed 230 kilometers per hour. Clearly I'm not gonna reach that in Lisbon. I'll leave that for Germany when I go there and we can talk about that, the driving experience on the Autobahn. Now let's talk about the motors. So you have two motors, one on the front, one on the back. Clearly, it's an all-wheel drive vehicle, but there is a different power distribution. Both motors actually come from the i4 and from the i7. They're not the same motors that you would find in the i7 M70, and I'm talking about the rear one. But there is a different power distribution. So, you have 340 horsepower going to the rear axle and 261 going to the front if you're going by the 601 PS metric. And why is that important? It's important for one reason, because even though the car is an all-wheel drive, with that power, extra power going to the rear axle, it's going to give you different drive dynamics. So what I'm expecting from this car, it's really to be rear wheel bias, something that BMW is known for in their gasoline or even diesel cars. And we will see if that's the case. I'm also gonna be able to experience what it feels like driving 600 horsepower versus the 335 from the E40 and if that's gonna make a difference, especially during spirity driving. Before we go for the drive, let me also tell you about the suspension because that's gonna make a difference. It also has the rear axle suspension, just like the E40, but it's upgraded. So I'm actually getting in this one, the Adaptive Suspension Professional with active roll stabilization and integral active steering. So the car's behavior should be a lot different than what I experienced in the E40. I'm expecting the rear end to be a lot more composed, the overall car to be a lot stiffer, and we'll see if that's the case. So, with that being said, I think now it's time to drive the car and see what it can do. All right, so let's put everything right now into the sport mode. We're gonna focus on the other ones later. Sport mode active. Once again, because I have this particular suspension, the car is lower by about eight millimeters. I think that's 0.3 inches. You can hear also the iconic sound. Seems to sound a little bit different in this car than in the E40. So even though the sport mode is on there as well, it sounds a little bit more dynamic here. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's definitely got a different iconic sound. It's a combination weird between digital electric and gasoline, I guess. I gotta find out more about that. All right, so first impressions. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. I mean, I better be careful because you can get up to high speeds in no time. So I was on the same stretch with the E40 and I can tell you right now that the power delivery in this one, it's a lot more aggressive. Similar sport modes, 
but it's not as progressive as linear as on the E40. It's more neck snapping. And I mentioned how I love the progression in that car, but I don't know. I mean, this is just, I mean, this is just ridiculous. I mean, it's so good. Unbelievable. I mean, it's crazy good. All right, so let's see. Definitely a lot sharper. So overall, I can feel the suspension being a lot sharper, a lot tighter. There is less play in the rear. I would say the rear end, it's not as playful at the first glance. I'll have to spin the wheels maybe a little bit more. It might not be as easy as in the other one with all the traction controls on, but we'll see how it does. Definitely right there. So I went over the same speed bump several times with the E40, and I can tell that the suspension was a lot more compliant there. It was nicely absorbing the shock versus this one. It was a lot sportier and a lot stiffer. Also the brakes, I'm pretty sure the brakes are upgraded because they bite a little bit more. I'm also in the adaptive brake region, so not the one pedal feel yet, but I definitely feel them being a little bit more aggressive. It's also the same brake by wire technology, so no difference there, but I have a feeling this one has the upgraded rotors. I think the other one had the 17 inches ones. This one's gotta be, it's gotta be bigger because it does feel, it does feel a lot better when you stop the car. Once again, here we go, going over that speed bump slowly. It doesn't rebound as well as on the other one, and that's by design, of course. I mean, they want this to be the M60. This is the M performance model of the i5 series, of the 5 series. It's the most powerful 5 series, at least until the M5 arrives. So this is the top of the line, at least for the next you know, 12 months until the M5. So you want to have a sporty car, and that's the idea of these cars. If you're paying that much more money, which is, I believe, about almost $20,000 more than on the E40, then you better get something special. And this is a car for the enthusiasts. I can tell you right now, just like the i4 M50, that's a car for the enthusiasts. That's a car for people that absolutely enjoy driving on the weekends, enjoy pushing the car. This one will be just the same. Is it similar? Not sure yet. We'll find out as we drive the car and I'll tell you more about that before this video ends, of course. All right, so turning in, here we go. I mean, you can, See how nicely rotates around the axle and the rear end is kept in check. It's a lot grippier than the E40. I mean, in this situation, the E40 started to spin the rear wheel a little bit. You could hear the sound maybe in the video, but in this one, composed, very, very grippy. It doesn't step out on you. Of course, I can do DSC off. I don't know if I should do it right here, honestly. It's not extremely safe probably there are a lot of cars coming back and forth there's some bicycles and i don't want to be stupid and crazy today i think you know a little bit of a spirited driving you know not pushing the car to the 10th of a limit i think it's good enough for today i'm sure there'll be an opportunity in the future to hit some you know back roads that are not as busy and then i'll have a chance to test the car once again going over that road right there i mean it was there was no pavement anymore i just went over a bump there and I could feel the suspension being quite, quite stiff. Now let's turn around a little bit and do a little bit more driving and talking. So, active anti-road stabilization, what does it mean? Well, essentially it's the same feature that you've seen in plenty of other BMWs. The idea is to really keep the car from moving, you know, sideways quite a bit. So it's trying to keep that body roll in check. Of course it works in tandem with the integral active steering. That's one feature that helps the car at low speed. So when you want to maneuver the car inside city centers, you'll be absolutely useful. I always recommend that option. And then of course, if you go at higher speeds, I don't remember what's the threshold there. So it will give a little bit more driving dynamics in the car. It's a whole philosophy behind it. I've talked about it. There is no point to probably go all geeky on this stuff today. But essentially, if you have these two things in the car, they are extremely, extremely useful. And it's going to also help with the overall maneuverability of the car. Let's push the car a little bit. Definitely a little less body roll than on the E40. So if you were to compare the cars back to back, which I'm doing right now on the same stretch of road, then you will feel that immediately. There is also a rear axle steering standard on the i5 M60, which essentially enables the rear wheels to turn up to 2.5 degrees in the opposite direction. Now, of course, I gotta mention the steering. It doesn't get better than this. This is the right road to test that steering. There are also different bushings in the steering rack, which brings more feedback from the road. And that's the impression that I had the first time that I drove the i5 M60 prototype. BMW told me that 
particularly with the i5 M60, the idea was to provide a driving experience with a natural feel. They didn't want it to feel artificial, and that's why you're getting this bounciness in the suspension, that's why you're getting the slight body roll. They could have probably tightened the chassis a little bit more and tightened the suspension a little bit more, but according to them, that would have created an artificial kind of driving experience. I mentioned already the i5 having a rear wheel drive bias in normal driving scenarios. Of course, when I push the car hard into these corners, I can feel additional power going to the rear wheels, which essentially will provide additional traction at the front as well. If you go into the comfort mode, which I'm gonna do later today, I have a feeling the car will feel completely different. You'll be a lot more plush, a lot more comfortable, with absolutely less feedback coming from the road. Let's mention the brake regeneration. Once again, same components as on the E40, similar to all the other electric cars. You have a B mode, the one pedal fill, then you have a D mode, and you can essentially switch between an adaptive state, low, medium, and high settings. There is a difference though when it comes to the maximum brake regeneration that you could get from the car. In this particular application, it's 198 kilowatts. All right, so enough nerding out. Let's push the car a little bit more and maybe just show you what it can do. Once again, going up a speed bump, a lot more aggressive there. Great brakes once again, really nice brakes here. Turning in, very, very good. Nice moving around the axle there. Here we go, so fast. I mean, oh my God, it's making me car sick already. It's ridiculous fast. Oh, you heard the tires drifting a little bit there. So it looks like I broke traction just a little bit. Let's do some quick overtake. Let's see what he can do. Here we go. I mean, this is just ridiculous. I did break traction a little bit at the front, so there was a little bit of understeer there for sure. It's got so much more power. I mean, I can feel this immediately, the torque. It's there instantly. I mean, you can feel that massive torque. I felt it yesterday also in the BMW i7 M70. Great brakes. You saw that bus coming in hot. A little bit too hot for my comfort. But once again, really, really nice brakes. Of course, later today, I plan to test also the 0 to 60 times. So uh, hopefully I can get close to the advertised 3.5. All right, so let me do one thing. Let me put again the POV camera on. It makes me look like a dork a little bit, but it's usually the best view that you can get from inside the car. So let's try the boost mode right here because it's a nice straight 10 seconds. Oh my God, this is just ridiculous. So fast. A lot more fun than on the E40. So, I've talked about what it feels like driving, but let me show you now. Maybe you can have an idea of what I'm doing here. Trying to stay within speed limits at least. Here's the grip that I was mentioning right there. So grippy. I mean, honestly, I did not even lift up the throttle at all. Great brakes, turning in. Here's a sharp corner, so let's see what he can do. So good. Really, really, really good. Since I have a car in front of me, let me tell you a little bit about my conclusion. If I look at the E40 versus the M60, of course, the video will keep going. I'm gonna talk about the design. We're gonna go stop, get off the car, show you the design, how it compares to the E40. We're gonna talk about the interior. We're gonna talk about the highway system level two plus. So please don't go anywhere, especially if you're interested in finding all there is to know about the car. I ask you kindly to stick around. But if you wanna get the driving dynamics conclusion immediately, then I can tell you this. It is far more dynamic than the E40. So if you're looking for the ultimate 5 Series, this is it. It doesn't get better than this. I mean, there is nothing better than this. 
I'm going to be driving the 550 XE or the X Drive version. I'm sure that will be fun to drive, but it's not going to be as crazy and silly as this one. From a sportiness perspective, absolutely the sport mode in this car it is beyond better than the one in the E40. I'm assuming the comfort mode also, once I'm going to test it on normal roads, I'm going to be able to probably feel that it's also a little bit more dynamic, sporty or stiffer than the comfort mode in the E40. So no surprise there. I've seen that across multiple, multiple BMW products. So why would you be buying this car? You might be asking, especially since the range, it's not great. This is probably its biggest downfall. It used the same battery pack with 81.4 kilowatts hours capacity, usable capacity. So essentially, instead of the 295 mark you're getting in the E40, you're only getting 258 on the EPA rating. I believe the WLTP is a lot more generous, so I think it's up to 400 and something kilometers, but I'll have to check and I'll put that on the screen. So if you have range anxiety, that this one will probably stress you out a little bit, especially if you live in places like Chicago, where you'll have to deduct maybe 20, 25% in the winter. Even if you precondition a car, you're still gonna lose some range. Of course, we'll do some winter testing in the future. So that's probably gonna drop the range maybe to the low 200s. Now, of course, if you have home charging, then absolutely no issue there. You can recharge this battery on the 22 kilowatts in about 4.2 hours, or if you use the 11 kilowatts option in the US, it will take about 8.5 hours. So not an issue. If you have your own solution at home, you can leave it overnight. It's gonna charge, that's fine. If you have access to DC fast charging, same thing, no issue, zero to 80% in about 34 minutes, or you can snack charge for 10 minutes, I believe 156 kilometers on a WLTP. So plenty of quick range if you need it. Now, of course, if you don't have access to that, then things can get a little tricky here because the range, especially in 2024, it's not ideal on the M60. I'm still not sure why they didn't go with the larger battery pack, but I'm gonna ask them because I wanna put that in our print article when we talk about a lot more details than we do in videos. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check out our website and we'll talk about that. All right, so let's get to the conclusion already. i5 E40 or i5 M60, if it was my car, or if it was my friend's a meets car. Because, you know, I mentioned in the E40 video, I have a friend that asked me, should I get the E40 or the i5 M60? So I became personally involved with this topic right now because I want to make sure that I'm going to provide the best feedback to him, the best opinion, the best advice. So if it was my money, I would get the i5 M60. Despite the low range, I will find a way to manage the charging situation as I do right now with the i3. I spend a lot of time at Whole Foods. Not ideal because even though I'm getting, you know, decent prices on charging, I'm definitely getting um, some expensive bananas every single week. Let's just put it that way. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. If you have, if you can manage the charging, then this is the car to get. Now, if you have range anxiety, if you don't have your own charging solution, if you can find easy, public charging stations, then get the E40. It will give you at least 40 more miles of range, which might not seem like a lot, but in certain situations, it will make a difference. So if that's your main concern, that car will do the job. If you're looking for pure driving dynamics, stupidly fast car like this, then absolutely the i5 M60. It's a rocket. It's a lot more fun than the i7 M70, even though the car, it's more powerful. It's faster from zero to 60. I think 3.5 versus 3.7. We're gonna test that out today on the track strip, public track strip, but it's a lot more fun to drive. That's a luxury limousine. This is a business sports sedan that happens to have an electric drivetrain in it still has a little bit of that BMW DNA, that BMW fun factor. It's not dead yet. There is, of course, not a lot of soul in electric cars, and we've talked about that in the past, but this one will put a smile on your face. It will not give you that sound from a, let's say, V8, for example, but if you want to push the car and you want to have some fun with it, absolutely, this car will deliver. So, with that being said, don't go anywhere because right now I'm gonna go change everything out in here 
and we're gonna go for a drive on the highway and then we're gonna talk about the design of the car inside and out because that's quite controversial and I'm gonna share some opinions on that because I managed to interview the head of exterior design at BMW today and he shared with me some interesting anecdotes and thoughts on some of the design decisions in the car. All right, so now I'm on the highway with the BMW i5 M60 and this is a perfect scenario to test the car in a different driving situation because it's not all about spirited and dynamic driving but it's also about your daily commute your daily driving what does it feel like to live with the car is it a good daily driver so let me see if i can answer that in this you know short video i can't really go into a lot of details but i'll give you my impressions so first let me go into the more comfortable mode which is set up under personal so immediately I felt the car becoming a little bit softer. Even the side bolsters deflated a little bit so they don't hold me in place like it did with the sport mode while driving like a maniac. So everything right now it's geared towards comfort and that starts with the suspension. I can feel the suspension being a lot softer, a lot plusher. The accelerator pedal, it's also not as aggressive. I could feel that immediately the moment that I switched to the personal mode and then of course the entire chassis it's not as rigid it's not as stiff as in the sport mode so once again what i'm experiencing right now it's what i told you a little bit earlier today that dual character in recent bmws if you want to have a comfortable plush and relaxed drive you can achieve that via the comfort mode and then if you want to go all crazy all wild you can always do it via the sport mode no surprises there and it's the same thing with the i5 M60 because right now I'm definitely in a more relaxed position. The steering feedback, absolutely numbered than before. So you're not getting the same feedback from the front tires and also from the road. And that's okay because right now I'm not planning on pushing the car hard. I'm really just planning on driving like a normal person. And of course, this is the right time where you could also take a look at the efficiency. I mean, I started this with almost full range. And of course, by going fast and all of that, you can quickly deplete that battery. There is also a max range since we're talking about electric range and all of that. And I mentioned the 258 miles on the EPA rating. Let me talk about the max range, which is also available on the i7 M70 and on the i540. So with that mode, you can extend the range up to 25%. It does that by reducing the power on the motors. I'm not sure if it does it on both or just the rear. I'll have to find that out. It also reduces some of the comfort features inside the car. So that's how they achieve this extra range. Now let's talk about the ADAS, which is the automated driving assistance systems, maybe something like that. Essentially the same thing that we've had in the i5 E40 and of course in other new BMWs. Level 2 Plus, which is actually the official name, it's Highway Assistant. It will be available in the US, of course. And it does come also with a new feature, which is called the automatic lane change. And I've said it in the E40 video, I'm going to go for a ride with the engineer responsible for this system and he's going to tell us how it works. But in a nutshell, when you're on the highway and certain conditions are met, you're able to go into the level two plus functionality and then you're able to change the lanes by confirming the lane change with your head movement. So if you would tilt to the left, it will change the lane to the left. If you tilt to the right, it will do it to the right. And we're gonna show you that in the next demo. So I'm about to get really close to the long straight that I've been looking for the whole day where I can do some zero to 60 runs I'll make sure to install the GPS box as well. I'll be wearing a POV GoPro camera as well. So you should be able to get different angles. And let's see if we can match the 3.7 seconds from zero to 60. So now it's time to do the zero to 60 with the BMW i5 M60. This one should be a lot faster than the E40. It's projected to do 3.7 seconds. So let's see if we can achieve that. First of all, sport mode on. Traffic is cleared, so once again, we're gonna hit that boost mode. Boost mode, here we go. So let's see, 3.81, so very, very close to the official 3.7. Of course, there is always a deviation 
in the runs based on tires and all of that. So let's do one more. Let's see if we can do better than this. Even though I felt like the launch was perfect. Nonetheless, it is so fast. I feel my stomach. My stomach's not doing too well right now. Second run. Let's see what we can do this time. Once again, let's get this ready. Perfect. My modes, I want to make sure that we're still in sport. Of course, boost mode. Ready to go. Here we go. All right, let's see. 3.84, so kind of similar to the previous run. So clearly we're off by point. 1 second, 0 0.1 seconds, so not too bad. That's within the acceptable limit. So clearly a very, very fast car. And once again, I can feel it in my stomach. This is really, really, really fast. All right, so a very productive day. We've done the E40, the i5 M60. Yesterday, we put the i7 M70 to test. Of course, we did a drag race on that as well. So extremely, extremely fun days here in Portugal. But it's not always about the top speed. So right now, I'm gonna go take everything out of the car, all the equipment, I'm gonna rearrange it. And we're gonna go back for a drive and tell you more about the i5 M60, about some of the features, design, and so on and so forth. So don't go anywhere. All right, so it's time to talk about the design of the BMW i5 M60. First off, we have the Alpine White right here. Yesterday, we had a Brooklyn Gray. Of course, that's not the only difference between the E40 and the M60. So let's take a look at the front and let me explain why. The Kini grille, as you see right here, it has these horizontal bars compared to the vertical bars that you saw yesterday on the E-Drive 40. So that's immediately a huge change at the front end. BMW always says, okay, this is motorsport inspired, supposed to be sportier. I get it, and I guess this was a design decision in order to bring this car probably close to the upcoming M5. I spoke to the head of design in the past, and he did hint at that, that when we see the new M5, we might see a similar Kinegrill on that. Now let's talk about the rest, because of course the car is a little bit controversial, and that starts also with the headlights. It still has the double headlamps that BMW is known for, but this time around, they added those inner graphics, two of them in there. And that's the one piece that creates a lot of controversy because if you don't look closely inside, you're never gonna see those double headlamps. So why did BMW decide to go away or move away from the heritage? Well, earlier today, I actually talked to Christopher Weil. He's the head of exterior design at BMW. And he said, maybe for one single reason, because everybody's been trying to copy BMW and using the same light design. So in order to move away from that, to make sure that BMW stays unmistakable, they will recognize from far away, decided to move towards this design. They're saying that it's still a double headlamp, so that has not changed. So that was the philosophy behind the design of the lights. Of course, they are slimmer than before. They look a lot more premium in a way and a lot more digital. You expect this car to be a lot more digital than the outgoing G30. Front end, there is one piece that really bothers me and I told actually Christopher earlier today, that's the radar right there. And apparently there was no other way to really integrate that. That was the only spot where they could put that large radar and because you need that for the level two plus driving assistant features. We've talked about that earlier today. So that's the radar right there and you need it and there was no other place to actually put it. Let's keep going. A lot of shapes at the front. I mean, you can see right here, so many shapes, lots of air openings, functional, of course. So I asked the designer, is this a functional design choice or was it purely style? And he said, no, it's actually mostly functional because we need those you know, air openings. You need to improve the aero drag and they did. It's actually 0.23, I believe compared to 0.26 on the outgoing model. Nonetheless, it does look more like a Lego-ish type of car. I mean, so many shapes happening there. It does look aggressive, so it just depends. I've seen it in darker colors. I've seen it in frozen Tanzanite blue also at the BMW Velt. I've seen it in a black color, and it does look really, really good. Of course, this one is the M Sport Pro package. So there is an M Sport package and an M Sport Pro package. What's the difference, you might be asking? Well, for starters, it brings this contour around the grill in all black. Clearly, that's something that you would expect to see. And then, of course, you're also getting some other 
blacked out bits around the car and we're going to talk about that as we move around the car but before we do that let's talk about the creases on the hood unfortunately you can't see them here really well i mean white it's not great for showing design usually but that was the option that i had today so we'll have to go with this one i did see earlier today the fire red the vegas red i think it's called in the us and you can see four creases running down you've seen it also on the e40 they're actually identical and they are functional too because apparently it's helping with the aero drag and the airflow and all of that he also said that if you pay close attention to those creases you can see the second one here but essentially it has the same width right there between the creases as half of the kidney grill so again they're trying to bring everything together in a very cohesive package and that's what we have today do i like it it depends there are some angles where i really like the car and there are some other angles where maybe i'm not so in love with the car it also depends what color you're getting and lastly if you see the car in real life and especially coming from behind there was a i5 m6 driving behind me yesterday and it looked really really good really massive really aggressive and like i said if you get a frozen deep gray you will see those lines perfectly let's move on because i've talked enough about the front end side view i have this optional bmw individual 21 inch wheels the range on the i5 m60 i believe goes from 19 to 21 and you can see right here two-tone bicolor and of course he has the m sport brakes with the red calipers i believe that's the upgraded calipers because apparently in some markets uh, the base m sport package comes with black calipers but if you want to get blue or red you have to pay extra i'm not sure if that applies to the us but we'll look into that i think this is a european thing as well where you're getting the m badge on the fender so i'm not sure if the us cars will get that i'm not a fan honestly i feel like there are enough m badges around any car so we shouldn't put any other ones and mirrors right i mean you've seen it with all the new mpa models and performance automobiles as bmw calls them and of course it's part of the i5 m60 as well extended shadow line of course that's going to bring some more blacked out accents which actually go really nice with the white i mean every time you pair full white body of a car of a car with the blacked out accent it just looks really really nice the contrast is there and it looks quite sporty actually same thing goes for the panoramic roof as you can see right there i mean it just goes really nicely with the overall design of the car speaking of the roof i asked the question is it more coupage than before because it does look like especially when you see the cars side by side so if you're looking at this line he explained to me on the g30 this line actually goes a little bit further back and then it drops on this car it actually starts to drop a little bit sooner and as you can see it ends into this Hofmeister King so it's got more of a fast back look but of course it's not a grand coupe look or anything like that I would say it's more of a sedanish with a little bit of a coupe in there flush door handles of course BMW has got to bring all the products within the same design language so that's the idea right there there is no other history behind that you still have this Ziegler character line it's been part of the BMW DNA for quite some time and it's still there so what's the point of that well from a functional perspective it actually breaks down the height of the car and it makes it look a little bit lower and closer to the ground there is an additional line running across you've seen it yesterday on the E40 as well and once again that's the one the BMW uses to create some shadows on the car of course a lot harder to see it on the white body of course you have this rocker panel on the bottom I'm not sure if you can customize that but I believe you can probably get it in carbon fiber if you go for the end performance parts don't call me on that but that was the case in the past for some models let's go in the back actually before we do that let me turn on the lights so let me do that there is a simple reason why I wanted to show you the lights because you have to see them to understand them they're still l shape only difference is there are actually two of them right now so you can see you have one right there one on the bottom stacked up and they connect a little bit right there what's the point of that well aside from a stylistic or from a design decision they're also a little bit functional because you have those two notches right now on the outside which helps quite a bit with the aerodynamic properties of the car m sport pro package also brings this spoiler right there so you have this trunk spoiler very solid of course you can go wild and crazy if you go with the m performance parts there are quite a few options there to pick from 
pipeless. Of course, it's all electric and we talked about that as we drove the car today, the performance and all of that. But you have this diffuser that's a little bit more aggressive in style than the one on the E40. Of course, plenty of shapes here also. I mean, so many shapes. But again, apparently there is a functional decision right there because this piece right here also helps quite a bit with the aero drag. If you look from the back and from the side, maybe it actually, the entire panel just kind of wraps around and follows behind here. And that's going to help with the aero coefficient and the aero drag. So again, BMW, like the designer said, we're an engineering company. So we want to make sure the cars are first and foremost functional. Let me open the trunk. It might be a mess in there because I've been filming the whole day, but we'll open the trunk. As you can see, I mean, I don't have a lot of bags right now, but clearly you can fit a lot of things. I believe the cargo capacity, it's 490 liters. And of course you have some additional space right there. I also have a plum. I haven't had a chance to eat this one today. And you get some space right there if you want to store your uh, charging cable or if you want to put some more bags. So decent space. We'll have to test this one out when we go for a road trip with the car. All right, so the final thing that I want to talk about on the design of the car on the outside it's this shorter trunk. So I asked Christopher why and he said because they wanted to make this greenhouse a little bit bigger in order to bring more light into the car and make the car look and feel more premium. So that's why you have this little bit stocky and very very short trunk right there. So that's it from the outside. Once again you might be asking me do you love the car? Do you not love the car? I've told you I also love the E40 because it has the vertical bars but I also love this one because it's a lot more aggressive. Is it the best looking 5 Series ever? I'm not sure. I mean, that decision will probably be made in the next few years or maybe decades because there are plenty of BMWs in the past that nobody loved them, like the E65 Series. I mean, that car, nobody loved it initially. Now everybody looks up to it. So we'll see what happens to this one. But of course, it doesn't have the class and the flair of, let's say, the E39, one of my favorite cars. So with that being said, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to be brief here because if you really want to see everything there is to know about the interior design, you should probably watch my eDrive 40 video because I spent a lot of time showing you a bunch of features. So I'm going to go quickly over this and then we're going to go back for a drive and do all the crazy stuff with drag racing and everything else. So let's hop inside. Okay, so once again, interior design of the BMW i5. Of course, don't expect a lot of changes compared to the i540 because they're really not i mean so let's start with the ones that are quite obvious so right here because you're getting the m sport pro package which by the way you can also get on the i540 the only difference is that you're not going to get this indicator right here at 12 o'clock in red another change right here compared to the base i5 it's really this carbon fiber trim Again, I'm not sure you might be able to actually get it as part of the carbon fiber package. So that might be available also on the E40. I'm just comparing the two cars that I saw yesterday and that's the one thing that stands out. Other than that, it's really pretty much the same. It gets similar M Sport seats. Of course, this one gets all these M bits on the seat belt. And other than that, really exactly the same thing as on the E-Drive 40. And that includes the large curve display, iDrive 8.5. I've talked about this yesterday quite a bit in the i5 E40 video. Please make sure to watch that one because it's quite informative. But I'm going to show you just a couple of things. Clearly, this one is my favorite. My favorite update in 8.5. It's the new integration of the AC controls. It was a lot more complicated. It took an extra step in iDrive 8. Now it's a lot simpler and it kind of mimics the old physical buttons. Of course, they're not there. I've talked about that. I don't like that, but that's a different story. There is also a shortcut right now there for seat cooling, seat heating, and of course the steering heating as well. Now, if I go to the menus right here, there are a couple of apps. One of them is only specific to Europe. Bundesliga, you can watch that live. Unfortunately, yesterday we had no signal, so I'm going to do it right now so you can see it because yesterday we couldn't do it. There was no roaming signal where we were. Hopefully right now the connection is a lot better, so it's loading. And here we go. So essentially you can watch live Bundesliga football directly on the car or on the screen. Um, granted, you have to be parked, so you're not allowed to watch the game and drive. So that's the one. Of course, you have YouTube. Again, you might have seen in other BMW integrations, the i7 has it as well. We played around with that a little bit, but you can load up any movies that you'd like. And I'm going to actually uh, do a short reel for Instagram, so you can watch that a little bit later if you'd like. Now, let's go back. 
Of course, you have the Air Consoles games. I haven't talked about this one yesterday, but you've seen also my previous video. Maybe if you haven't, I'll link to that. But essentially, all you have to do is this. I'm going to wait for the screen to come up. And then as long as we're getting signal here, once again, you got to have a decent signal. All you have to do is really just put your phone right there. You're going to scan that QR code. And that's going to launch a browser, actually. And that's going to be your gaming controller. I'm not going to play games right now. I mean, honestly, if you want to watch that, and I can just type whatever there, done. And it's going to load up. And essentially, you're going to pair this one to the car. It actually did it automatically. So it looks like if you have the QR code, you don't have to enter the code from there. And now you can see the games right there. And this one becomes a controller. So once again, just a quick overview of this. If you want to watch that video, I'm going to make sure to link it. Other than that, pretty much exactly what I've showed you yesterday in the BMW i7 M70. Of course, I talked about the my modes as I was driving the car today. So let's not focus too much on that. This is essentially the front position. I'm 6'2", about 1.9 meters tall. As you can see, the seat is adjusted to my driving situation and there is some decent room in the back. But what I'm gonna do next, actually, we're gonna go and have some people in the car and see how much actual legroom you have in the back when you have two or three people. So we're gonna talk about that next. But with that being said, really, just a quick overview of the i5. I'm gonna hop back behind the wheel and we're gonna do some driving because we have more things to talk about. And of course, we do some drag racing and so on and so forth. So don't go anywhere. Let's go for a ride. I'm in stop and go traffic right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about the suspension options in the i5 M60. There are no less than four. That's right, four options. So you have the basic one with a variable sports steering. Then you have an M Sport suspension. And then you have two adaptive suspension professional. That's the official name. One of them comes with the integral active steering and then the other one with the anti-roll stabilization. So the more money you spend, the better it gets, clearly. You might be wondering which one to choose. Unfortunately, I do not have an educated answer today because I only have one option to test. The top one, the adaptive suspension professional with the active integral steering and the anti-roll stabilization. So essentially, this is the only one that I can test today. But based on my previous experience with similar suspensions from maybe the i4 and other products, I can tell you that this one is probably the most comfortable one, definitely the most adjustable one. Okay, so I'm heading back to the hotel. Design review done, dynamic driving done. We've talked about some of the features and specs that come with the i5, the suspension and all of that. And now, of course, it's time to draw a conclusion. There are multiple ones, actually. Oh, so I'll try to be as brief as possible. So first one, BMW i5 M60 or the i4 M50? As you can tell by the numbers, M50, M60, M70, there is an M40 also on other products. The higher the number, the more power. So if you're going for more power, absolutely the M60. If you're looking for a more dynamic ride, maybe focus more on the sportiness of the car versus comfort, then I would say the i4 M50 will be the choice for you. If you're looking for additional luxury in the car, more daily comfort, I would say, then absolutely the BMW i5 M60. It has a lot more amenities. It's got a lot more room inside, front and back. As you can see, I'm six feet tall, 6'2", actually, 1.9 meters tall, and plenty of space. And as you saw in the video, we also tested the rear space as well. So from that perspective, absolutely the i5 M60. Price-wise, if money no issue, of course, it's almost $20,000 more for the M60. Then again, you're probably getting better bang for your buck with the i4 M50. Now, what about the i5 M60 versus the i540? I've talked a little bit about that in the dynamic driving section of this video. But once again, if money no issue, if you love your car to be on the sporty side, I'm not telling you anything new, just go for the i5 M60. If range no issue, same thing. I'm gonna keep it as simple as that. Now let's do the unthinkable i5 M60 versus i7 M70. I drove both cars actually back to back almost. 
and I can tell a little bit about that as well. First of all, the i7, it's a luxury limousine. There is no other way to describe it. It just happens to be extremely fast and it could be fun to drive, but it's still a heavy car. It's still not gonna be as dynamic in many ways as the i5 M60. So if you're looking for the ultimate driving dynamics between the two, then I will absolutely go for the i5 M60. If you're a, a semi-serious customer and you just want a lot of power in your car, and of course you want an eco-friendly car, a green car, then the i7 M7, it's a great choice as well. And I've talked about that in the video review. So that's my review of the i5 M60. Of course, there are a few drawbacks. I mentioned them you know, in this video, and maybe I'll point them out one more time in case you skip the video. But once again, the range, it's just not good enough for 2023, 2024. We need a little bit more range. It's still unclear why BMW decided to use the same battery pack from the E40 into the M60. It's a little bit expensive. Of course, starts at about $88,000, I believe, which is not cheap at all. So a quite expensive car, but if you have the means, then you shouldn't worry about pricing. Other than that, this is a good car from BMW. It is, it is a fantastic alternative to whatever it's on the market right now. Definitely a good alternative to Tesla. I mean, they will always have a little bit better range because of their battery packs. The charge infrastructure for Tesla, it's quite good. We have to admit that. But overall, you are getting a more premium car, a more solid car, I would say, with the i5. And I always say this, you should always go see the cars at the dealer because you will be in the end the only one in charge of the decision. You have to see the cars, you need to experience, you need to feel the cars. And if you can also drive them, it is highly recommended because that's going to be the true test. You know, how the car feels like to you and what do you need from the car. We're only here to kind of guide you in a certain direction, but we're not here to give you the final answer. So. It always comes down really to your personal preference because we're all so, so different and we all like different things as well. So with that being said, hopefully you got some value out of this video. Hopefully it was informative enough, even though I geeked out quite a bit today and I talked about a lot of things. But as always, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for your support. And I hope to see you in the next one because there is a lot of content coming up and I'll see you in the next one. Fun day. I mean, it could be days like this every day. I mean, better than being in the office today, honestly. A lot of work. I only slept like four hours, but you know, looks great on Instagram. People think I'm on vacation all the time. <laughs>